Hey, it's your man Tony from Hurricane Wind Power coming at you from Salem, Virginia in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, today, I want to come at you with some math, and this may be but as boring to some of you, but um, I get this a lot. I'm going to answer a viewer's question today. So, you know, I, I don't have it up here, but I'm, so I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, the question is, my house uses $300 worth of electricity a month. How, you know, how much solar do I need to buy? That's, that's the question. And I get that question five hours uh, a, a day. So I'm going to make this video here. And for those of you that know how to do this, just flip on to the next video because this isn't for you. I'm going to be talking about math. I don't have any cool things to pull out on the table today and actually I had other content that I wanted to bring out but we're going to talk about simplified calculations on how to ballpark how much solar power generation you need to get your needs met. This is not the be all end all video. It's not going to be precise and it's not going to go into battery storage but we're just talking about how much power you need to generate. So the simple answer to the question is, um, my power bill is $350. You know, that's not something that I can help anyone with. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that is a question no solar company can answer because everybody's going to have a different pay rate and a different bill and charges and taxes and this and that and the other, and we don't know. So what we need from... From someone calling in I need to know how many kilowatt hours you use in a month and preferably it would be good if you could tell me how many on average over time and have an idea of if you just want to meet your median load per month do you want to cover it all all the time do you want to be off grid do you want to store up power do you just want to run it back into the grid these are things that we need to know before we get started so we have thrown up, um, if you get on your power bill, they all, everyone that I have faxed over, I've seen, they all have a median figure of how many kilowatt hours, you know, it, it, you use in a month. Uh, a simple one, we got 2,000, let's call it 1,800, you know. There is not an average per square foot. That's another question. I, my house is 2,000 square feet. How much, how many solar panels do I need on my roof? Um, no idea. I have no idea. So we need to look at the bill. We need to see how many kilowatt hours per month we're using. And we need to use some math to start out with to ballpark and get into a good idea of what kind of system we need to put you into. So if, if we just try to wrap our mind around this thing, it's... It's let me let me throw this at you. And if any of you have a better way to come up with this, you know, throw it down in the comments section. I'm not going to be mad at you. Maybe I'll learn something from a viewer out there. But in the say we got 1800 to 2000 kilowatt hours per month. Uh, what if we divided that by 30 days in a month? So then we have a idea of how much power we're using in a day. So if you do that, that's about 66 kilowatt hours per day. So um, to generate the 66 kilowatt hours that we need per day, and this is on average, so the sun doesn't play and cooperate all the time. We're going on averages. So, you know, we got to figure out our battery storage and or if we're just doing payback, net metering, whatever we're doing, that's a, that's a topic for a different video. Today we're just trying to figure out power generation in a ballpark in a simple way to wrap our mind around what we need to start looking at. So if we take um, 12,000 watts of solar, you need to look at the chart, the latitudes run five, five and a half, six kilowatt hours per day. I'm not looking at one. I mean, that's just something we do. I often take the lower number five and use that to multiply out because we have inversion inefficiencies we have in terms of dc to ac if it's a battery based system we're changing the charge controller is going to have some inefficiency 
taking a battery and turning that big in, into AC through the chemical reactions, you know, that's going to, there's, there's just some inefficiencies there. So if we take that lower number, just to, for ballpark purposes, so if we take our 12 kW system and we multiply that by 5, we come up with about 60 kilowatt hours per day. And if we take that 60 kilowatt hours per day and we multiply that by 30 days, we're going to come up somewhere, you know, depending on the average, we're around 1800. So, you know, you can top that off with one of our wind turbines. And if you're in a good wind area, you're good. Okay. So, um, just a quick way to look at the math to start sizing your system. Uh, if we take the example of a 1200 or a 1200 kilowatt hour per month bill, we use the same we use the same way to take a look at it. We break down the 1200 by 30. We need 40 kilowatt hours per day on average. We have an AKW system and we have five hours of sunlight. That's going to give you uh, 40 kilowatt hours in a day. We multiply that by 30 days in a month. We're at 1200. Okay. Um, now, when we get down to say your bill is 600. Okay, 600 kilowatt hours per month. We divide that by 30. So on average, you need to make about 20 kilowatt hours a day. So if we use a 4 kW system, we have four times five is about 20 on average. Again, we're going with the law of averages here. So um, we multiply that out and 20 times 30 is your 600 kilowatt hours per month. So um, now, when we get into battery-based systems, I've used examples of four, eight, and 12 kW systems. Uh, we will prepackage some of those systems in you know, obviously I've, I've said on here, but if this is the first time you come to our channel, I do a lot of custom work, custom design. When we get into that, I'll probably get a couple thumbs down for saying this, but you know, at that point, I wouldn't recommend doing a 12 volt system. Um, when we get up to 12 kW, that's a 100 watt solar panel. We'd have to mount like 120 of those to the roof it's going to take a lot, a lot of wire. That's going to take a lot of combiner boxes and breakers. And uh, really, the inefficiencies in taking 12 volt up to 240 when you get into doing a house, I just wouldn't do it. When you take controllers like the Midnight Classic or the FM80, you know, 80 amps, 96, you know, 48 times 96, we're in a good range to do a system you know, around 4,500 watts. That's, you know, that's the way I prefer, prefer doing it when we get into larger systems. That's not saying I don't love my 12 volt systems to have on the side as a backup in case you need it. But, you know, again, this is in response to five, five emails a day, you know, about how much power does my 2,000 square foot house use? I don't know, but I hope, I hope, you know, I hope that this simplifies the matter and can give you a framework and that, you know, all, all we're doing here and all we're, all we're explaining today is you take your kilowatt hours, divide it out by 30 days in a month. You come up with uh, an average usage per day, and then we use that backwards to figure out your system is a ballpark average of how much power you're going to need. That's just generating capacity. That doesn't have anything to bat do with battery storage. When you get into net metering and running the things backwards and the payback rate, you know this may you know this may not be that helpful just a simple way to ballpark and start looking at how much power you need to generate with your solar systems so we got a lot of great content coming with you or coming at you you know here real soon um i have jumped and changed the content and wanted to get this out here so we can get it to the people that are wanting to 
start sizing their solar system. So I hope this has been helpful. Leave a comment in the section. If you got a better way to do it, let me know. If, if this is helpful, give, us, give me a thumbs up. If I suck, give me a thumbs down. That's cool. And we'll catch you next time. I'm out.